Hi, I'm George Woodbury from College of the Sequoias in Visalia, California, and this is part four of a five-part final exam review for my intermediate algebra class. In this video, I'll take a look at exponential and logarithmic equations, applications, and graphs. Let's begin with an exponential equation. Notice here the variables in the exponent. We call that an exponential equation, and the exponential term is isolated. I cannot rewrite 37 as e to some integral power, so I'm going to go ahead and take the natural log of both sides. ln of e to the 2x minus 3 equals ln of 37. One property of logarithms is that the natural log of e to a power is simply equal to that power. So the left side becomes 2x minus 3 equals ln 37. I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Notice I cannot add the 3 and the 37 because the 37 is part of the logarithm. To avoid the temptation, it's a good idea to put the 37 in parentheses. Next, I'll divide the 2 over to the right-hand side, and I'll have my solution ln 37 plus 3 divided by 2. We could have tried to take a different logarithm, like the common logarithm or log base 10, but it doesn't work out so cleanly with a base of e. ln was definitely the better choice. We can use our calculator to approximate the solution. Um, regardless of the type of calculator, if you find ln of 37 first, and then you add 3 to that result and push equals, and then divide it by 2, you'll find that this is approximately 3 0.305. Here we have a logarithmic equation. The variables are inside of logarithms. And whenever we have two logarithms on the same side or more, we want to try to condense those together into a single logarithm first. Now since we're adding two logarithms of the same base, we can multiply their arguments and combine them in a single logarithm. So it's going to be log base 8 of x minus 3 times x plus 9 is equal to 2. I'm going to go ahead and FOIL that out. Uh, that's going to be x squared. Let's see, I've got a plus 9 and a minus 3x. That's going to be plus 6x and negative 3 times 9 minus 27 is equal to 2. Now that we've condensed the logarithm, I have a logarithm equal to a number. I need to change this to exponential form. So x squared plus 6x minus 27 will be equal to 8 to the second power. Now 8 to the second power equals 64. So I'm going to subtract 64 from both sides of the equation so that I can have everything on one side equal to 0 on the other. I'm going to try to factor if I can. If I can factor this quickly, then I'll go to the quadratic formula. This does factor to be x plus 13 times x minus 7 equals 0. So my potential solutions are negative 13 and positive 7. Uh, with a logarithmic equation, we have to check for extraneous solutions. The value 7 will work. All I have to do is plug back in to the original equation and make sure that my argument is non-negative. Actually, I'm sorry, make sure that my argument is positive. 7 minus 3 is 4, that's positive. 7 plus 9 is 16, that's positive as well. And 7 is OK. When I check the negative 13, it fails. If I put in negative 13, negative 13 minus 3 is a negative number. I cannot take the log of a negative number or 0, so I must omit this solution. 7 is the only solution. Here we'll be looking for an inverse function of a logarithmic function. We start by rewriting it as y equals ln of x plus 10. Interchanging the variables, x equals ln of y plus 10. Again, we do that because if x comma y is on the graph of a function, f of x, then y comma x is on the graph of its inverse. We need to solve this equation for y. That means I need to get rid of the ln somehow, and I'm going to do that by changing this to exponential form. 
remember that the base for a natural log is e. So I'll raise e to the x power, and that's going to equal y plus 10. Subtract over the 10, and we're done. e to the x minus 10 equals y, and that is our inverse function. Here's the first of two application problems. We're told in 1974, a stamp cost 10 cents. In 1994, that price had become 32 cents. And we want to figure out what happens or what the price will be in 2020. The equation we're going to use is P equals P sub zero E to the KT power, where P is the amount at time t, p sub zero is the initial amount or value, k is the growth constant, and t is the time in years. The price started off at 10 cents and had risen to 32 cents in a time period of 20 years, 1994 minus 1974. And we want to figure out what k is. 32 equals 10 e to the k times 20 power. I'm going to divide over the 10. 32 divided by 10 is 3.2. can take the natural log of both sides. ln of 3.2 equals ln of e to the k times 20 power. In a previous problem, we saw what happened here. That's just equal to k times 20. And I'm going to divide over the 20. K is equal to ln of 3.2 divided by 20. And we're going to approximate that to six decimal places. That's 0 0.058158. The first step in these exponential growth problems is to figure out the value of K. Same for exponential decay. Now we're going to use that to try to address the problem at hand, what would it cost to buy a stamp in 2020? Okay, let's pick it up from there. I'm going to create a table again, P, P sub 0, K, and T. We know from the original problem, P sub 0 was 10 cents. We just found that K was 0 0.058158. And here we're looking to find the price of a stamp in 2020. Now 2020 minus the original year of 1974 tells us we're looking 46 years after the beginning of the problem, so t is 46. Using the same formula, p equals p sub 0 e to the k t. I'm going to substitute 10 for p sub 0, 0 0.058158 for k and 46 for t. Um, by calculator, if you have the right calculator, you can plug it in as you see it. But in general, it's a decent idea to multiply the exponent first, and that's going to be 2.32632. Raise e to that power, multiply it by 10, and we find that p is approximately 102. So that's going to be $1.02. In 2020, look it up and let me know. Okay. On to the next problem, another application. This one involves compound interest. The formula for compound interest, the amount at time t equals the principal times 1 plus the interest rate divided by the number of times it's compounded per year raised to the nt power, where n is the number of times it's compounded per year, and t is the number of years. So in this problem, we're going to make a little table and start picking off the important information. We're looking at $5,000 at the end of the problem. That's the amount at time t. Uh, the principal is the amount that's de deposited or borrowed. In this case, he's deposited $2,000 in the account. The 9% is the interest rate as a decimal, that's 0 
If you don't change that to a decimal, you're working with 900%. Um, compounded monthly, that's 12 times per year. And what we're looking to figure out is what is T. So in this problem, we're going to have 5,000 equals 2,000 times 1 plus 0.09 divided by 12, all raised to the 12T power. And we're going to try to figure out what T is. Um, on the next screen, I'll solve this all the way through. But one step that I would recommend is getting this expression in parentheses down to be a single decimal. On your calculator, 1 plus 0.09 divided by 12 is 1.0075. And we'll pick it up from there on the next page. I'll copy that again. 5,000 equals 2,000 times 1.0075 to the 12t power. We'll begin by dividing both sides by 2,000 to isolate the exponential part. 5,000 divided by 2,000 works out to be exactly 2.5. Now we're trying to solve for an exponent in the variable. I'm sorry, a variable in the exponent. We're trying to solve for a variable in the exponent. To get that variable out of the exponent, we can take the natural log of both sides and then use the power rule to move that out in front of the natural logarithm. That's going to give us ln of 2.5 equals 12t times the natural log of 1.0075. We can divide both sides by 12 natural log 1.0075 and that will solve the equation for t. You want to be careful with this in your calculator. Either use parentheses around the denominator or you can divide the natural log of 2.5 by 12 and then divide that result by the natural log of 1.0075 Either way, this should end up being approximately 10.2 years. Okay. Uh, the only problems we have left are a couple of graphing problems to take a look at. Um, to graph f of x equals 3 to the x minus 1 minus 15, we're going to graph first the equation y equals 3 to the x, and then we'll shift that 1 to the right and down by 15 because hk in this problem is 1 negative 15. Okay. Uh, the graph of y equals 3 to the x will have three points that are of interest to us. Negative 1, 1 over b, 0, 1, and 1, b. When the base is 3, that's negative 1, 1 third, 0, 1, and 1, 3. Shifting uh, by 1 in the x, positive 1 in the x direction means to add 1 to each x value. And shifting down by 15 means to subtract 15 from each y value. That's going to give us the point 0, negative 14 and 2 thirds. Add 1, subtract 15, that's 1, and negative 14. Add 1 to x, subtract 15 from y, 2, negative 12. Also, keep in mind that the horizontal asymptote is at y equals k, which for us will be y equals negative 15. On the next screen, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to graph this. Keep in mind that the domain is the set of all real numbers and the range starts at negative 15 not including negative 15 and goes to infinity. Now we'll graph this function in uh, GeoGebra. The idea is we want to take the graph of y equals 3 to the x and translate it one unit to the right and then down by 15 units. There are a few key points that will help us to do that. I'm going to begin by placing the horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 15 on the graph. Now the point um, 
on the original graph at 0, 1, which I've just shown on the graph, I want to move that 1 to the right and down by 15. And that will give me this point here. Again, that's 1 to the right and 15 below. The point on the original graph at 1, 3, I'll move 1 to the right and down by 15. It gives me this point labeled B. And then finally, the point negative 1, 1 third, I'll shift down below. And now I just want to draw the smooth curve that goes through these three points. And there you have it. One last graph. This is a logarithmic function that we're graphing. Here, hk is 1, 1. We're going to graph, take the basic graph of y equals log base 3 of x and shift it by 1 to the right and up by 1 because h is 1 and k is 1. The basic points we work with here are 1 over b and negative 1 1 and 0 and b comma 1. With the base of 3 that's going to be 1 third negative 1, 1 0 and 3 1. For the x values we'll add 1 to those. For the y values we'll add 1 to those. So our points are 1 and 1 third 0, 2 1 and 4 2. Keep in mind that a logarithmic function has a vertical asymptote at x equals h. So for us, that's going to be x equals 1. The domain is restricted to the open interval 1 to infinity. The range of a logarithmic graph function, negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, we'll take a look at the graph on this next page. Now I'll use GeoGebra to show you how to graph this function. On the screen, I've already graphed y equals log base 3 of x. Notice it goes through the point 1, 0, 3, 1, and also 1 third negative 1. I'm going to shift all of those points one unit to the right and up by 1 as well. Uh, if I move the first one 1 to the right and up 1, right 1, up 1. Do the same thing for 3, 1, right 1, up 1, and the same thing for 1 third, negative 1, 1 third, negative 1, right 1, up 1. I'm going to add in the vertical asymptote at x equals 1, and now I just want to draw the smooth function that goes through these three points. So I'll get rid of the old graph and insert the new, and there you have it. If you have any questions or comments on these or similar problems, or if you want a copy of the review and answer key, or if you've got a request for a video you'd like me to put together, go ahead and visit the contact page at my website. That's georgewoodbury.com. Thanks and good luck.